A wild record rainfall in central Oklahoma helped pull parts of the state out of a lingering drought. Much of western Oklahoma is still dealing with its aftermath, which is where our Andy Barth picks up the story. Rob, the drought that started in 2011 hit the entire state hard, including our water supplies. Now, as you can see here in this picture taken in February, the water levels are so low that the boats in the Lake Hefner Marina in Oklahoma City are resting in mud. Now, fast forward to June of this year. This is the exact same location and a completely different story, thanks to some heavy rains and a water release from a reservoir up north. So while Lake Hefner is fully functional again, it does come at a cost. It's a sound not heard much around here. A restaurant that used to be a booming business now serves only a handful of customers a day. The reason? Low water levels on Canton Lake. It's cut everything about 60%. Alan Cox owns the Overlook restaurant that sits right next to the lake and says not only is the water level low, but so is the recreation. In the past, we'd go through five or six gallons of men as a week. Weekend, we go through a gallon. And Cox says something needs to be done to keep recreation alive. We need that recreational value put on the lake so we can maintain a level to keep recreation alive and going good. And for Canton Lake Association's Mark Fuquay, the lake offers more than recreation. Well, by far, it's the largest economic driver of our area. With parking lots empty and campsites desolate, Fuquay says money is lost every day. The Corps of Engineers did a study that within a 30-mile radius, some $20 million were spent on lake growers yearly here. When you lose that, it definitely has an adverse effect on your economy and the people here. Aside from recreation, Canton Lake is used for municipalities. Oklahoma City owns rights to the water and has drawn 30,000 acre feet of water three times in the last two years. Uh, they took a, the last 30,000 acre feet that they took really knocked this lake down tremendously and, and put it in grave danger of a total fish kill. A problem that may not recover for years. It could take up to 10 years for the fish to come back if we get a total fish kill this year to come back to a healthy level like it is now. And for Oklahoma City, what was once bone dry now is underwater. Their lakes are now, they've got the rain that, that we thought they would get and we've not received any rain. So we've, we're, we're in a terrible shape, the lake is. Had they waited another month, this whole scenario wouldn't even be happening right now. And Fuquay says the lake can't take much more. We're down 13 feet. We don't have much more to go. You know, I mean, our average depth out there right now is probably around six feet, you know, or seven feet. And so we don't have a lot more to go down. So the algae's turning over, the wind's going to sweep it, and we'll suffer another six feet of evaporation this summer. All the more reason for rain in western Oklahoma. We just need the water. Well, Andy, I am struck that when it comes to water here in the state, there are definitely the haves and then the have-nots. Rob, that's very true. For example, the water that was released during the first two weeks of May from the seven major lakes in southeastern Oklahoma would have been able to fill the seven lakes in southwestern Oklahoma, even if those lakes were bone dry. And again, this is excess water that's flowing over the dam and then out of state. Exactly. So what's going to happen with Canton Lake from here? Well, Rob, while it may take years for Canton Lake to fully recover, there is a push to give rural areas more of a say on Oklahoma's water use. Governor Mary Fallon signed Senate Bill 965 into law this legislative session, a move greeted by Oklahoma's agricultural community as welcome relief.